Hello, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar. Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz coming at you. And we got another dominating victory on the PGA Tour sleeves. Russell Henley down at Mayakoba, your old stomping grounds. He made me proud. Victory. He made me proud down there. It's fun watching him. I was like, that's what I would have done with the right clubs. That's what I would have done. Exactly. Boat race, 63, 63, 65. That's what I would have done, I feel like. For those right that don't shit. know, your one PGA Tour event mm -hmm. was Mayakoba. You decided to take $5,000 from a club company to switch dri just driver? Driver three-wood hybrid. Just okay. anything with graphite. All the shit you need to hit really straight out there. I was like, five grand. Might as well be a million. You got it. I didn't even play. I played my practice round with you. I believe I played my practice mm -hmm. round with you and Dre that week. And then the, the club company came afterwards. And I wasn't playing the next day. Or maybe it was Wednesday already. I only hit the thing on the range. And I was like, oh, yeah. Feels pretty good. I mean, I'm talking no track man. No nothing. It was the dumbest. I mean, I'm an idiot. That was the dumbest shit I've done in my life. And I proceeded to blow it into the mangroves. Um, there's no way that I didn't lead the field in penalty strokes. And I had a sevy like first day out there to shoot like 74 i mean it was just scrambling from everywhere someone <laughs> actually sent me a screenshot on instagram this week like was digging into your maya Coba run look who you beat and down like a few spots lower than me was act joel damon actually so i clipped joel i didn't think i beat hardly anyone and well I you didn't. didn't this week but and uh joel's figured the place out yeah a little, a little, bit more little t3 then. for joel this week yeah but man what a interesting decision that was for you i mean after the practice i was like god this guy might win <laughs> then you switch your driver three wooden hybrid never mind i was just hitting low knuckle balls with my driver i was like yeah that's not only that's perfect out there in february by the way well a little different ball game this time of year well russell henry russell henley led the field in driving accuracy he is one of the best iron players on the planet and he had a hot putter this week so therefore it leads to a pretty dominating performance had a six shot lead going into the final round helpful Claims, you know, he's like, I slept terrible, obviously, because all you can sit there and think about is, okay, how do I not fuck this one up? What if I lose? What yeah. if, if I gag or if somebody, because there was low numbers being fired around that. I mean, shit, he shot 63, 63. There was 62 from Will Gert, Gordon earlier in the week. It's like, it's out. Somebody could do it. There's only a couple guys that could even possibly catch me. But if one of them catches fire, shoots a 63, like it ain't done. I might have to go play around to golf. But uh, yeah, six shot lead going into Sunday, better than not a six, six shot lead. Write that down. It's good advice. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would say probably more importantly, your TCU Horn Frogs <laughs> remain undefeated, still have a chance for the college football playoffs. Can you believe it? Just the shocker of the millennium. The boys just keep doing it. They keep doubting us. We keep doing it. We've got big game, large game this week down in Austin. Six and a half point dogs, by the way. Um, Twin Ewers, boy, look out. Yeah, we got game day coming down. The lights will be on. The lights will be bright. Just how we like it. The world keeps doubting us. Even the, even the little podunk committee couldn't pimp us this week because three of the top six lost what are you going to do not move us up they had to we got to win all 13 i don't know that we're going to but it's already been a better year sunny dykes uh, what didn't love the hire mm -hmm. admittedly when it happened but just goes to show you get the guy the talent he deserves tcu type talent he can turn that thing around jesus big week but what a weekend it was we had tennessee georgia with Ooh. georgia that was on a very convincing wasn't it? i thought it was going to be this hyped. shootout it was going to be a lot of fun to watch and it just Luckily, I was in Nashville, so I didn't it didn't really care what the football was like. I was having a great time. But it definitely didn't live up to the hype of the game, in my opinion. Now, LSU-Bama that made up for it a bit. And I'll be totally honest because we're in the trust tree. I don't remember all of it, but I know they, they lost in overtime I'll tell you to this, a two-point conversion. On a two-point conversion. It was a good one. And the over hit on that, by the way, another greasy dub. Uh, other good thing about the Tennessee-Bama or Georgia game, they under hit, mm -hmm. which was the pick of the week. Uh, hit by a million, by the way. But you missed... I'm sure you watched it. You just don't recall it. You missed a hell of a game. You were with Smiley down there at the nuptials for JT. I texted Smiley like two seconds after the two-pointer. I was like, oh, my God. And he writes back like 10 seconds later, we've lost contain. Yes. <laughs> I was like, all right, go get him, bud. Well, before we get to the Dewar's moment of the week, this is actually a special moment in whiskey history because Dewar's is releasing the all-new Dewar's 12-year-old whiskey. Dewar's has really invested the time to make a truly special scotch whiskey, like all the time you put in at the range to perfect your swing. The new Dewar's 12-year-old whiskey is double-aged and finished in first fill bourbon cast for a flavor profile full of fruit, vanilla, floral notes, and spice, earning a 94-point rating from Whiskey Cast and a 93-point rating from Whiskey Advocate. Give it a swing, and please enjoy responsibly. Now the Dewar's Moment of the Week, and I got to give a huge shout-out to the new Justin and Jillian Thomas. I was lucky enough to be in attendance in Nashville this past weekend at their wedding. So, ladies, it was a time. Set the table for me. Oh, boy. Dig in. I'm here. I'm here to ask questions. You can ask all MVP the questions MVP of want. the week goes to who? Boy, it's it's. there was a lot of people that put their name in the running, mm -hmm. um, including myself, okay. Kevin Kisner, Gary Woodland, um, Smiley 
was okay. He was he was on fire at the wedding, but I don't think he brought it for forty eight hours. Like okay, Smiley, to. we're gonna have to we're gonna tighten that up. Steven Spieth, solid performance. He's tough. To t- he's the one seed going in Steven for sure. Spieth, he's Duke. An he's Duke heading into that thing. Um, yeah, there was a lot of people having a great time at an incredible event out at Troubadour Golf Club. Got to play some golf. Um, had a welcome party. Obviously, the wedding. My the house I stayed at. My buddy Ryan Johansson gave me consisted of myself. Gary Woodland, Kevin Kisner, and then we adopted Daniel Berger. Mm, good. It's nice. Always nice to have a little hospitality. Bring in a, Dude, a lost it was, puppy. Every single minute of the day was just nonstop con- comedy. Just e- abusing each other, making fun of each other nonstop. It was so much fun. And then we topped it all off by heading to downtown Nashville on Saturday for college football. After my three weeks, buddy, Vegas, Thailand, Nashville, it, I- I'm glad to be home. Rest the bod, son. Yeah, it's Rest time. the bod. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta treat the bod right. You it know was, what I mean? Get you some Z's. Get it you was, some vitamin C. Those little emergencies or whatever they are, those are helpful. I've had a lot of IVs in the last few. Get weeks. back right. Those are game changers. Yeah, aren't they? It is. Those are ones you get. and You're like, I'm dead. There's, I can't go today. There's nothing happening. Get that thing. It's like a light switch. Like, oh yeah, I'm actually good. I have uh, the girl that came to my house to do it after Thailand. She's like, "What all do you want?" I was like, "Everything you got. <laughs> just I put want everything in that bag." You know when you're a kid and you go up to the soda pop machine, Coke machine, and you just hit a little bit of every one. Mm-hmm. We used to call it the suicide. I don't yeah. know what y'all call it. Uh, I want that's what I want of just the IV. Make me one, feel good. I want the energy. I want the nutrition. I want the caffeine. I want everything you got. You got a little crack? Sprinkle that in. That'll make it work. <laughs> just I need it all. There's nothing you could put in my body to make me worse right now. Let's but it, just say that. It seriously, it was a beautiful wedding. Star-studded event. I mean, yeah. Jordan Spieth was Everybody. the best man. Roy McIlroy was in attendance. Morgan Wallen was there. Heard of him. Um, it I, it was an honor to be there, and I had so much fun. I hope I don't want you to have another wedding, but can we just go back to Nashville again? Yeah. We can yeah. celebrate anything we want. Yeah. Anything we want. Uh, names for days out there at that thing. Uh, it looked like, or I've heard from people that were in attendance, that it was fun. I'm sure that's a week. you got to take a little time, decompress. You know, it's nice, too, because... You know, Justin's obviously a rather big deal. And so he made it where you had to check your cell phones. And so I Love feel like it. when you, the cell phones are away, everyone can play. And you get to be yourself. Like, no, like, oh, is that going to show up? If you got people like that at that thing, that's the only way to go. Mm-hmm. You can't have some like, oopsies, that affects lives. It was so, cool. So congratulations. Or cheers, Justin. Cheers and moment of the week. I'll give you a quick one on me. It's not as good as that, but I'm, uh, I'm officially a NASCAR guy. <laughs> I went to a NASCAR race this week. Don't ask me why. Went with some people. There's... Needed to go to it, and uh, oh my God, it is a production. We showed up to this thing. It's out in like Avondale, like West Phoenix. Someone told us right now at this moment, this is the, I believe they said the third largest city in Arizona. I mean, there were trailers and RVs and stuff for days. You go in there, 80,000 jam-packed into this thing. We get there, drink a lot of cold beer. You just drink a lot of cold beer and sit and watch people go in circles. I was trying to figure out the whole thing. I pretty much, I was like, how do you pass anybody? All the cars go the same speed. Everyone goes on the same track, how you get around. It's a different beast, but I'm officially a NASCAR guy now. Joey Logano is mm-hmm. your champion. Yes, like a number 22 car. 22 car was running good. Cold. 22 was running good. Bad day to be a That's cold beer. That's how they talk. Bad day to be a cold beer. Mm-hmm. 22 running good. <laughs> right. So I'm a NASCAR well, guy. I'm just going to take your word for it. I'm not the biggest NASCAR guy, but I'm sure it was no, a No, I've been to one, and I know one racer, and now I'm a NASCAR guy, officially. All right. Well, this week, we sit down with mm. a young, up-and-coming superstar, Michael Thor Bjornsson. Still in college, over at Stanford. This man finished fourth at the Travelers Championship on the PGA Tour. Made the cut at 17 years old at the U.S. Open. He's won the U.S. Junior, the Western Amateur. I mean, the kid is a future superstar in the game of golf. Here he is, Michael Thor Bjornsson on Golf Subpar. All right, folks, we got a star in the making joining us here today. He's the fifth-ranked amateur in the world. He's a, won the Western Amateur. He damn near won a PGA Tour event this past summer, and he's only a junior at Stanford on a pretty decent trajectory, I would say, thus far. Michael Thor Bjornsson joins us. What's up, Michael? How are you, bud? Doing well, guys. Thanks for having me. Dude, yes, yeah, thanks, sir. Thanks for joining us. Congrats on all the success. But before we get into that, I want to go back to when you first – had a golf club in your hand because I heard this story is rather interesting. Yeah. Um, I think, well, this is what my parents told me at least, cause I don't have any mem- memory of this, but I think I might've been close to like eight months old or something. Just Ooh, wow. It's good. Sitting good down in my home in Cleveland with a couple plastic clubs. And yeah, I have, I have no memory at all. Um, but just sitting down, couldn't even stand up at the time, just whacking my plastic clubs around and 
I guess that's where it all started. That's incredible. Take us through though, like your your early start into golf. Like, were y'all members at a club? Did you did you were you just a range rat? Like, how did you get into the game? Right. Um. So I, I'd probably have to say my through my parents. Uh, they picked up the game before I was born. Um, and they both fell in love with it. So I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Lived there for four years. Um, and my first round of golf was when I was two years old. Um, played eighteen <laughs> holes. Shoot, <laughs> uh, I, I can't tell you that. Um, I can't. I can't remember. I'm, I'm not sure if my parents know or not, but they they probably do. Uh, but then we moved over to Massachusetts um, when I was four or five years old. Played in my first tournament. I think it was a U.S. Kids event when I was five years old and kind of been playing tournament golf ever since. We belonged uh, to uh, the Harmon Golf Club in Rockland, Massachusetts, probably from when I was six, seven years old up until I was 12. It's like 45 minutes from my house. So it was kind of a, a commute to get there. But I spent numerous hours uh, throughout the summer. Um on half days uh, when we had them um, during school. And I, I'd say that's where I probably developed into a, a pretty decent golfer and really knew from there that golf is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. Yeah. And you're doing it now before we get too deep into like your background and your story and all that, like the media likes to call you Thunder Cub. Okay. That's kind of like the nickname they give you. What do your boys call you? Like what do the guys on the team call you? Um, I, I, I mean, it's kind of up to them. They call me Michael. They call me Mike. Um, my friends, like my close friends, have like given me like a nickname, like Mal, like M A A L, just like it's kind of short for Michael. Just, just abbreviated. No, it, I guess. no Thor though. No one calls you Thunder Cub. Like, hey, Thunder Cub, <laughs> uh, go not my drink? close close friends, but people do call me Thor. A lot of people do. Um, my Thunder Thunder Cub actually started at IMG uh, Academy. Uh, where one of our coaches, he told me, he's like, you know, your last name translates to the son of a thunder bear. I'm like, oh, I've actually never really thought about it. But yeah, that that adds up. That's awesome. I, I would go by Thunder I would Cub. Call you, I'm going to, do you mind if we call you Thunder Cub? Because it's too good to not Please call you that. <laughs> okay. All you, right. you mentioned IMG, though, because for the people that don't know, I mean, that's, that's a, uh, basically high school where it's just all sports. I mean, you go there for golf. What was it like for you there compared to going to, I know you went back your senior year. Um, to Massachusetts to go to high school. What was it like going to IMG versus a regular high school? Oh, it was quite different, I'd say. I mean, it was almost, it's pretty similar to college. Um, you don't really have much supervision from like your parents. So you really got to, I guess, just nice. focus on your, focus on, yeah, <laughs> in, a, in a way, um, focus on yourself, just like really make sure you got a schedule going because um, no one's going to be telling you to do ho your homework. Um, we did have scheduled practice, but I thought it was good preparation for college, at least, so you know what you need to get done and when you needed when you need to do it. So we had a pretty, um, yeah, set schedule throughout the whole year where I had school in the afternoon and practice in the morning. So from probably seven thirty to eleven thirty, we were practicing, um, either playing the golf course and workouts are included there as well, and then probably like an hour and a half break. Uh, to get some lunch, uh, shower up, finish a little bit of schoolwork before school started at like one thirty or so, and then from one thirty to six is when we had class. Ah, uh, class stuff gets in the way. I, I feel like the world kind of first heard your name when you won the drive chip and putt at Augusta National. Take us through that. I mean, as a fort, were you fourteen or fifteen at the time? I know that's the division think, you're in. I'm not sure if I was thirteen or fourteen, but it was around there. I was probably fourteen. Okay. Years old, yeah. But as a fourteen year old kid. Going down Magnolia Lane, you know, being at Augusta National, what was that experience like? It was unreal. I I can still remember now my mom, I was sitting next to my mom in the van. Um, and her, she like loves taking pictures and videos all the time. And this is probably the one time where I didn't scold at her saying, Mom, put the phone away, this, that, because I I really wanted to remember it as well. Um, but yeah, I remember driving down in the van and we got out right in front of the clubhouse and you have that, uh, what is it, the flower display of the Masters logo. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not really sure if people understand, like, how big that facility really is. They have a few driving ranges. They obviously have the par three course and then the course itself out there. But, 
yeah, I mean, being a 14 year old, going to the place that you see on TV every single year, the master is probably my favorite tournament to watch uh, each and every year. And just being able to be there with the players hitting balls on the same range that they do at such a young age was really cool. Now you, you played a, you have a pretty sick facility there at Stanford, but how about that? The tournament driving range at Augusta national, is there anything better? Uh, probably not. No. I mean, it's everything is here there, like not a single p blade of grass is out of place and everything's the same color too. So a lot of places have a lot to learn from that, from Augusta. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, that's the mecca, without question. Do you remember your stats from drive, pitch, putt? Do you remember how far your drive went, how close you hit the chip and the putt? I think my first drive went at maybe like 252 or something, 251, like with one yard within the margin on the left side. Second drive, miles right. Uh, pitches were maybe like four and three feet or something, and then my first putt blasted it by, second putt, hit it maybe like a foot by something like that you know what the putt's going to be right because they do it like the same one virtually every year are you just sitting on the, is everyone just sitting on the putting ring trying to find that exact putt basically and fighting over the same hole because it mimics yeah. the putt yeah. that it's going to yeah. be like move my turn yeah i mean i was watching for three hours before i i teed off um just looking on tv trying to figure out the break um but i mean it's completely different when you step up there that is so cool. Such an incredible experience. Um, you end up you end up going to Stanford. Uh, I believe Tiger Woods is your idol, like he is a lot of ours. But yeah. was there ever any another school that crossed your mind, or was it Stanford all the way? It was basically Stanford all the way. I mean, I was telling people when I was like seven years old that I was going to be going to Stanford. Um, I mean, I did visit Clemson. Um, was talking to numerous coaches um, at Bandy and then Duke as well, but. It was, it was never really a doubt that I was going to be coming here. When did you commit to Stanford? Because like Colt said, you spent three years at IMG. Then you went back to Massachusetts to go to school there for your senior year. Had you already committed to Stanford at that time when you decided to go back? Yeah, I committed in the fall of uh, my junior year, so like around November. Um, so I had one more year. Yeah, finished off my junior year at IMG and then decided to head back, I guess, take a year off maybe. Um just to like recharge my batteries because college can be quite grueling, especially with all the tournaments that we're playing. Yeah. And you're, you're a long ways from home too, going from Massachusetts all the way out to yeah. Northern California. But you mentioned Tiger Woods. I mean, we all, I mean, that's who I, that's the reason I got into the game. Pretty sure that's the reason Slee's got into the game. And obviously he's your idol being at Stanford. He's obviously a huge supporter of the team. Have you got to spend much time around him? Um, Not so much. I haven't seen him out here Um, in the, two and a half years or so that I've been here. Um, but I have, I, I saw him a few times, Junior Ryder Cup um, at Lake Golf National, saw him at Junior President's Cup at Royal Melbourne, and then um, actually saw him a couple weeks ago, actually, at uh, the tailor-made shoot that they do yearly at... Uh, I'm not sure if I should be saying this or not, but like <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. But we'll, we'll leave it at that. But yeah, I saw him a couple of weeks ago. And I think up until, I don't know, maybe that, yeah, he shook my hand and I was like, hi, I'm Michael Thorpe Bjornsson. It's like the fourth time I've introduced myself to him over the past four years. And this is the first time he says like, hi, like, yeah, good to see you. Nice playing. And then he was busy. He had to go and do something else. But I'll definitely take that short conversation. But, but, Listen, You're on the radar, he, I guarantee. I you, guarantee. First off, you play at Stanford. He knows you are. He also watches more golf than probably anyone, so he definitely knows all about your results. So that's that's cool. How how nervous were you going up to him? Uh, quite nervous. He I mean it's crazy. I mean, Rory was to my left, and Tiger. I was. We were talking to Rory a little bit um, with Steiny, and then Tiger was putting in an outfit change or something, and then just like jumped in for a second, shook all of our hands and then, and left. But like, I, I, you almost forget like what your name is or like how to introduce yourself and stuff like that. You can just feel your heart racing. But did, you, no, I I mean, gonna, on the tailor made deal, did you hit any shots down there? Like, were you hitting shots in front of Rory and Tiger and all that stuff? Or was it just like photos? Uh, no, not in front of them. I, we kind of, well, we're doing our own thing. It was just mostly to see like what a photo shoot is like, or, 
just like what these guys are doing, like media wise, just, I guess, prepare us. So we're not so, mm -hmm. I guess, shocked when we go in to win in a few years. That's, that's really cool. You get to experience that, but I mean, you're, you're a guy, you've, you've played a couple us opens. You obviously contended at a PGA tournament. Do you still get like in awe when you see these guys hit the golf ball? Like, like a Rory McIlroy? Yeah, of course. I mean, Rory bombs it, definitely hits it past me. Um, I mean, just for anyone, if anyone's hitting a good shot, I mean, you, you envy that you, you want to be hitting good shots all the time yourself. Um, but yeah, it's gotten to the point where now it's like, I see them and it, I think to myself, okay, that's nothing really that I can't do myself, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's still awesome to hit Rory, I mean, see Rory and Tiger, um, and all those other guys stripe it. So, Yeah. All right, before we get back to Michael Thor Bjornsson, got to tell you, you need to head over to the golf.com pro shop right now and pick you up some birdie juice merch. We got the gravy bird hat here. We got the get amongst advisor here, among a lot of other things. And the best news is you don't even need a code. Just go check out. We're automatically going to give you 20% off. Now back to Michael Thor Bjornsson. You played a number of tour events, a couple of major championships and stuff now. Have you developed a relationship with any of the tour guys? Anybody that you can, you know, you text on a regular basis or ask for advice like, hey, I'm going through this. What do you do? Any, you got anyone like that on tour right now? Um, A little bit. I'd probably say Mav is the closest guy. He's hung out with us a couple of times uh, on campus. Um, I, I try not to text away or say too much to them because they have so much more on their plate than me. But um, yeah, Matt Mav's been a good resource. Um, Colin, the past uh, at the US, played a practice round with him at the US Open um, at Brookline, and then had dinner with him post Taylor May Media Day. Um, so I've gotten to know him a little better. He's given me a lot of great advice. Um, can credit him partially for the the good finish at at the Travelers after his advice that he gave me at the US Open. Um, yeah, I mean, all these guys are really nice and they're always looking to give us advice and try to make us comfortable out there. Just try to be a little nicer than Colin. Okay. He's a little edgy. Yeah, be a little bit of a prick sometimes. He's a bit mm. of a polarizing guy. We'll give you some advice. Old be nicer Colin. than Colin Morikawa and things will be okay. Okay. I'm always running off at the mouth. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Stanford. Like, obviously you're, you're there to play golf, but I know you're going to school as well. What, what kind of classes is Michael Thorbjornson taking? I am taking, I'm a communications major. So currently right now, I'm only enrolled in two units. I'm mean, not two units, two courses. Um, I'm taking a virtual reality class, which is really cool. Um, and then another comp class, American journalism. Not really, not really sure. I mean, virtual I'm, reality I'm, sounds interesting. I'm guessing. I'm a big virtual now. reality guy myself. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> you know, I, I was. My, oh, you got them? Throw the shades on? Like so what goes on in that? How does that work? I don't think a lot of schools have this. All right. But, uh, well, the class or the VR itself? Yeah, both. Like, what do you do? You put that on and you go to class? Yeah. How do you take a test over that? What is that? <laughs> we went to dumb schools. <laughs> um. So basically, like, it's its own computer. So you don't need to, like, put your phone in there or anything. Um. Just connect it to the Wi-Fi. And so we have class Wednesday, Fridays for this. Um. Wednesdays, we have lecture in person. So. We go learn about VR, what, like how it can help us like medically, like educationally. And then I guess like the technological parts to it as well, um, like how it's improving. And then on Fridays, we have our discussion sections where we have some sort of a task that we need to do on VR with three of your group mates. And we basically, there's this app that we go to, it's called Engage, where we all log in and we can see like our, our classmates. Um, so we're in a group of four. I see my three classmates every, every Friday and we are trying to like build like a meditation room or whatever it may be. Yeah. All right. We're officially in the future. Yes. We've yeah. arrived in the, yeah. we're technically now in the future. Give me this because like you're fifth in the world amateur golf rankings. You're a big deal in the golf world. You got Rose Zhang who's there right now. She's dominates. It seems like everything she does there. You also got a ton of people at that school that are going to be, they're going to invent Uber or something like that. <laughs> who's the big, who's the big man on campus at Stanford? Like when they walk around, like, Oh, it doesn't even have to be an athlete. I assume with all the people that are there, I'm, I assume. Um, is there one? There, there are definitely a lot. I, I'm trying to 
I think. Because the football's uh, not thumping like it was. I would assume Christian McCaffrey in his day was probably like, that's the dude. Right. You know? um, or Michelle I, Wee was probably like, that's, I remember that's the one. remember my freshman year we had Zaire Williams who went, went straight to the league after one year. He's on the Grizzlies right now. Um, I guess Rose would probably be like, I don't think people here at school realize that, uh, yeah, Stanford women's basketball is great, but the women's golf team is probably the best team here at Stanford. Um, I mean, Rose being number one in the world for three years in a row is quite an accomplishment and she's younger than me. So that kind of makes me feel old and <laughs> I try and learn. I'm, I learned so much from her. Um, that I think it's really cool. I'm I'm really excited to see how she does. Um, yeah, she's incredible. Looks good. Yeah. I actually, I did a little Q and A for PGA Junior League with her a few weeks ago here in Scottsdale. Got to meet her for the first time. Yeah. She is um very much more mature than her age. That is for sure. Mm, hard to she's, believe. She's got it. She's got it all together. Yeah. So it's it's really really cool to see buy that stock. So, but with with how how great everything is going, I mean, you're contending in PGA Tour events, playing majors. You know, you've won the Western Am, the Junior. Like, is there any hurry to turn pro at all, or are you wanting to stick around and get your degree? Um, I mean, I spe uh, I'm going to start with saying PGA Tour U. Um, that's definitely a very huge incentive to stay for four. Um, I think especially with the new rules or the, the like what they're proposing, having the, the top one guy or now the top five guys going straight to the tour, whatever it may be. Um, so, I mean, I'm just trying to focus on how can I get better today, tomorrow, play the best that I can at this next tournament. And it, it'll be pretty clear to myself. I mean, most importantly to myself, but, and to others when that time will be for me to turn pro. So I'm just taking it day by day and we'll see. I like this PGA tour. You, the, the talk of them possibly giving out five PGA tour cards. I think that's great. You get kids yeah. to stay in school, get their degree, but also, I mean, you go out and have a great year. You get straight to the PGA Tour. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, keep the best talent on the PGA Tour. Does that, so, like you said, that you know, the PGA Tour, you for you, that could potentially change things, right? That insane. But that's only for people listening. Like, that's only for fourth-year guys, right? So if you go have a monster junior, you could be the number one kid in college, but you ain't getting out there if you're a junior. It's only for seniors. Is that? Do you think that's the same uh, attitude that a lot of these top players have that you have? Like, yeah, maybe I do stay another year and, and wait for this and maybe go straight to the show yeah um i mean one thing though is that the pj tour rankings they start the summer before your junior year so junior golf i mean junior year and senior year go into it so how you play junior year if you play really well junior year you're going to be on the top of the leaderboard there for pj tour U. but yeah i mean with lift tour out now too i think, I think uh Eugenio last year, I think he, he turned pro. Um, he was supposed to play Palmer Cup, turned pro, and is on the lift tour now. He's won the lift tour, which is really cool to see. Um, you have David Pooch as well, who mm -hmm. forgoed his senior year at Arizona State. Um, and I, I think he's doing well now there too. But, I mean, everyone has their a, a different plan and like what works best for them. So I think for me, at least, what works best is just, I mean, I, I've been doing well here. I, I still have another year and a half, two years to soak up all the knowledge that I can from my teammates and from coach and all the resources that this place has. So my plan is to stay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your dad, because I heard he's your swing coach a lot like, you know, Xander Shoffley and Justin Thomas, they right. use their dads as their coach. Yeah. My dad has been my swing coach for my whole life, basically. Um, even when I was at IMG, everyone's like assigned a coach or you're paired up with a coach. My coach there, Robbie Sherlin, great guy, knew a lot about the swing, very knowledgeable. Um, and my dad and him would still collaborate together. So my dad's always been involved. Um, he's probably one of the smartest guys that I know. And um, so he actually recently just moved over um, to the States because he's been away. He's been living in Abu Dhabi for the past what is it now or I think it was like seven years or so. So mm -hmm. kind of hard to work on the swing together when we're just sending videos back and forth. So the last time he got to saw me play was I think the summer of my first U S open in 2019. 
Where where did he get his golf knowledge from? Uh, just the internet, I believe. He's just he's such a golf nerd. Cool. He's always looking at videos. <laughs> he, um, I mean that's I mean that's how he's learned everything. Yeah. Does he get to get out and see you play collegiate events now that he's back? Like, will he come on the road and work with you on your swing while you're at events? He hasn't yet, but we've discussed it, saying like, okay, if he's in the U.S. now, like he might as well just come to all these tournaments. But he traveled with me um, the whole summer, starting with uh, the U.S. Open up until uh, the Western Am. He left um, just before the U.S. Am. Beautiful. Let's. Uh, I want to go to Travelers real quick because you end up finishing fourth there, which is one of the best finishes by an amateur ever, and definitely within most recently. But you had a chance there. I mean, you you got really hot on Sunday. I know you made a couple bogeys there early on the back nine, but at one point, did you look up the leaderboard and be like, damn, I might win this thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was kind of a blur a little bit after, uh, yeah, Eagle 7. It was kind of a slow start to the round. Um, hit, hit every green like the first six, seven holes, couldn't make anything. Um, Eagle 7, tap in Eagle, part 8, and then birdied. Wait, the part seven, birdied eight, nine, 10, 11. And I kind of forgot how many holes I had just played. And then saw on the leaderboard, I was maybe like one or two back, or I even looked on nine, too. I think I was maybe in like third or four. I, I knew I was up there. I knew exactly where I was. Um, but yeah, I mean, thinking about it, I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. Just trying to focus on, okay, like, wow, there's there's a lot of people here now. Um, I didn't really realize it until I made my putt on 11 for birdie and the, the huge roar from the crowd kind of like shook me like a little bit. It kind of came out of nowhere, um, looked up and there was just 10 times more people there were 20 minutes ago. Um, so I was just, I, I think it was a really good learning experience because personally for me, I probably wasn't ready to win a PGA tournament. I think I was talking to my dad afterward too, um, I mean, it, I personally, I believe that I have the game to be able to finish it off, but just at the time, it's probably not, it just, it wasn't due. And what a cool tournament to do it at. I mean, the Travelers Championship is one of the best stops on the PGA Tour. They get incredible crowds. I mean, the players are treated unbelievably there, but that's got to be, that had to be incredible. Coming up 18 with all those people, except for this one asshole that's in the crowd every year when I was there, mm, they like to heckle me. Beauty of but America. other than him, that place is incredible. They get they get great crowds. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I think um, I remember a registration. Um, I can't remember who said it, but this one lady who was checking me in uh, said, "Yeah, the players love this week. Like you should really try and come again next year." I'm like, "Oh, I really hope so. If, like I get invited again." Um, but yeah, I mean, there was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Basically every single day, the caddies had their own dining area, which I, I think they normally don't get at other tournaments. Um, just everything about it. everyone's asking, oh, what can I do for you to make this whole um, week easier? Um, like the guys in the locker room at just everything. I, It's the best tournament that I've played in when it comes to player hospitality. That's awesome. And I know you, you couldn't win any money, clearly, because you were playing as an amateur, but what you would have won was about 406 large. So let's just say hypothetically that would have come into your bank account the following day, direct deposit style. What's the first thing you do with it? You got anything on the on the wish list? Probably just buy a car. I, yeah, not, I don't own a car, but I mean, I honestly don't even need a car. I'd probably just sit on it. Maybe go out with some friends one night. I think just yeah. sit on it at campus. Sorry, I like it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that would work. You're going to have plenty more of those very high finishes with massive paychecks. You're going to be just fine. Should we get to the a E9? $406,000 car. Just park it yeah, on campus and sit on it. Here's some I'm more advice. You, if that doesn't work, dude, then I don't know what does. Hold on. Here's some more advice. Be nicer than Colin Morikawa and don't spend all 406 on a car. Okay? Yeah. Just don't no. do that. Yeah, get a watch, too. <laughs> I can do that. Be like... Be like Kiradek off of Bonrad. If you make 400, spend 800. Yeah, put your back against the wall. It makes you want. It makes you hungry again. That's good advice. Push All right. Rat. Well, Michael, we do this with everyone. We do the, the emergency nine, some nine fun questions to get to know a little bit more about you. And we ask this to everyone. And I have a feeling I already know the answer to this one. You can be anyone, dead or alive, for a day. You get to experience their life for one day. Who would it be? Oof. 
I thought for sure you'd say Tiger. I thought it was coming. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an easy one. I have to switch it up a little bit. Maybe, okay. I don't know, I like prob- probably like Steph and Curry, like LeBron. Mm. Teams. Go with Steph. Yeah, he, go with Steph. Steph. I think he's more likable. Go with Steph. Just go through his warm ups. That would be fun. Yeah. Just to do that one time. Be a good little 20 minute stretch there. Uh, I thought you'd say Rojang. Maybe I, I'll go lose a couple tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> so the bar isn't so damn high. Uh, all right, I'll give you this because uh, – actually, I'll give you this one because it relates to what we were just talking about. You didn't – like I said, you couldn't get the 406000 that you would have won at the Traveler, so it went to Chesson Hadley. Did you ever get a thank you note or any sort of gift from Chesson saying, thank you for being an amateur? Uh, no, I have not. Mm. Actually, I'll look out for that. I'll, I'll see him next time I play a tour event. Um, I'll, I'll ask him about it. Yeah, that's worth something, don't yeah, you think? I think we that's should bring the, that up to Chester. That's like a that's the standard operating procedure. Yeah, I feel like. Yeah. You Michael, can't get the Michael, something. Yeah, Michael was a amateur. He made you an extra hundred grand minimum. Exactly. God. Share the wealth. Oh, We're Chesson? gonna have to talk to Chess, and you should be expecting something okay. shortly. Great, thank you. <laughs> All right. Next one. You mentioned Rose Zhang. I know you are very good friends. Spend a lot of time together there at Stanford. Y'all go out, play seven best of seven rounds of golf. Who wins? Mm. Me. Good answer. Four, that? Love or five, that. Or five. Do y'all do y'all play against each other very much? Not really. We normally play with each other, actually, against other people. Oh, that's, that's fair. fair. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good great. Game. That's good. Cool. Who wants to play? Straight up. Yeah. Good luck. Get some uh get some games in that one. That's a tough one. Um, right, good choice though. You're learning it at a very young age yeah. to take the one of the best players in the world as your partner. That is smart. Yeah. I mean you can get two of them on the same team. All right. Massachusetts guy, I know you're a Patriots fan. Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi? Mac Jones. Oh, that wow. was definitive too. I just like saying Zappi. Zappi. I still have hope. What he did at Bama was really cool. So okay. I'm still, I'm still waiting to see what, what, what he does. Yeah. He's, All right. He's been yeah. mediocre. He's, yeah, Bailey's right there too. Zaps just waiting, waiting mm-hmm. in the wings. All right, next one. You mentioned you don't have a car. So how do you get around campus, Michael? Yeah, uh, I will. Um, I have a scooter, or had a scooter. Do, do you have a scooter? Mm. <laughs> I had. A I heard scooter. we had a little, a little incident recently. Yeah, last Wednesday I was at the gym, you know, just trying to better myself, and then I come outside and my scooter's no longer there. So it got stolen. So I've just been walking places and borrowing my friend's scooter, who is currently in Florida, or my teammate who's in Florida, and then. Ethan, our fifth year, he has a car, so I've just been catching rides with him. Have we had any leads on to who possibly this could have been? Yeah. No. We'll first 48 this for I've you. I've been keeping my eye out, though. Is, is the rampant crime a problem at Stanford? <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like, the, there, it's some, like for some reason, there's I get an email every single week about a stolen bike or a stolen scooter. So is this like one of those like like bird scooters, or what kind of scooter was this? Yeah, it was like a high boy scooter and electric scooter I mean, yeah. or does it look like all the other like there are a bunch of these floating around yeah, campus? i probably got Damn. the most basic model so i i won't be able to locate mine if i do and, pass like, can you lock these things up or how does how does this work I'm not yeah i mean you guy. can lock it up i i mean i did not lock it up this time um so i guess it's on me but i've done i i kind of hide it in like the, the corner of the bike rack and like I don't know. God. Just can't, Stanford. Can't trust the mean streets of Palo Alto. I knew it. <sighs> Where do the Stanford Police Department fall in this case right now? Any any serious leads? Sorry? There's, where's the Stanford Police Department on this? They got anybody in mind? No, the perpetrator? Nothing. I don't know. Oh, Maybe someone from Cal. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be kind of hard since there's so many of these scooters around. Be like, that's mine. Be like, no, that was actually mine. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 They probably stole it because it's yours, knowing it'll be worth something coming up. All right, this is for me, more for me and Colt than anything. Uh, but do you know of any like tech wizards currently at Stanford or in the middle of some sort of startup that's going to be like the next Facebook or Uber <laughs> or anything that we can get on the front end of the IPO? Oh, uh, no, I do not know. Um, my, mm. uh, so my roommate, so Carl and I, we shared a suite with this, um, one junior, so he's one year above me. His name is Cal- uh, Calvin Acker. He started a company or started like a dating app. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but he's been doing well for himself. Um, very, very smart guy. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. I think he's a mechanical engineer. And Carl and I, one time, were just taking a look at one of his engineering books and closed it right away because <laughs> we just can't <laughs> understand how someone can learn something like that. These app people, man, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Text us the name or message us the name of this app when you figure it out because I would like to be on. You can't lose with a dating app, I feel like. There's going to be desperate people out there for till the end of time, you know? Yeah, I'll I'll get back to you guys on that. Done. All right. Well, I don't know if you recently saw they are announcing. They announced that there's another match coming out. It's going to be Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth versus Tiger Woods and Roy McIlroy. We're putting you in there. You get to pick the other three guys. Who are you picking? Or or girls. Uh, so am I picking my teammates here or am I just picking three you, other? You get to pick your you get to pick your teammate and who you're going up against. Okay. Um, and remember, it's for charity, so it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Yeah, it's for the kids. Okay. How about this? I'll take Rose on my team, mm-hmm. and then we'll put Rory on the other team, and then Nelly Corda as his partner. Okay. Ooh, made for TV. I'll be like good. It. Be a juicy one. See what that's. That actually good. could probably happen in a couple of years. Sit on that for a while. I would like to be on the broadcast for that. Yeah, sit on okay. that. We own the rights to that now officially. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, last one from me. Uh, from from me because we had Michelle Wee on the show here uh, not too long ago, and I believe she told us that at Stanford, her exams were on the honor system. Is that still the case? Yes, uh, I don't really that's think cla- classes to um, that have exams, but. I mean, so my freshman year was the COVID year, so everything was online. Um, so the honor system was definitely in play. Uh, sophomore year, that's kind of when I started taking classes at, like, there aren't really exams or, I guess, weekly quizzes and then, like, just, like, big papers. But, yeah, it's on the honor system here. I thought this was supposed to be a high-level academic institution. We're on the honor I mean, system. We got stolen scooters yeah, all over yeah, the no, place. There's no damn be, honor. <laughs> If you don't, if you don't get straight A's on the honor system. I gotta, I gotta question your your position at Stanford. I remember University. I made a forty four on my first exam. Yeah, mom, Intro I'm doing great. <laughs> Another hundred. But if it would have been on the honor system, it'd have been eighty two. <laughs> yeah, don't make it too good. Just get like a ninety. Yeah, ninety one. No questions asked on a ninety. Yeah, my 100. my freshman year, I I remember taking a psych class and definitely could have gotten a better score, but honor system, you know. <laughs> honorable man except for the scooter thieves yeah all right last one we'll let you get out of here do you think you'd be virtually unbeatable if that every tournament you stopped that you played at there was a music festival like Lollapalooza going along um prob- uh, probably I mean whether there's a music festival or not I'm always trying to win <laughs> rumor has it you had a Lollapalooza bracelet on when you won the Western Am I did, yes. I, I know where you're getting at with this. I did not go to Lala until after winning. Uh, the story would have been way better I'm, if you were going every, every yeah, night and then still know. beating everyone. I know what the story is. Who'd, like, who'd you go see? Um, so the Who day I went, we were supposed to see the baby and Young Thug, but that's when the baby got canceled. So we saw Young Thug. I went with my caddy, Drew, and then. He actually has like 10 of his boys from his fraternity. He goes to Wisconsin. Um, they live in the area. So we'd be, the, I think it was the 12 of us went down together um, the following day. I've never been. Is it just absolutely incredible oh, and wild? Yeah, it's really cool. And, and so it's like Coachella yeah. in Chicago. Yeah, it's like are you, a, are you Are you a hip hop guy? Is that what you mostly yeah. listen to? Yeah. Awesome. You're a big baby guy, aren't you? What's your Love favorite baby. baby? Yeah. Be my baby tonight. There you go. <laughs> That's Cole, all you I can talk and converse about the baby <laughs> albums. Awesome. Well, Michael, man, we really appreciate you joining us. Best of luck to you, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. All right. Well, that was Michael Thor Bjornson joining us on Golf Subpar. This kid's going to be a superstar, man. I'll tell you what. When you idolize Tiger Woods, you go to Stanford, you do everything like him, you're, you're making cuts and majors at 17, uh, winning the Western Am, huge. U.S. Junior, huge. Contending in a PGA Tour event. I mean, look out. This seem, this kid seems like a can't-miss kid. If you're buying stock, you think you're buying that stock right now? Goes to Stanford. I've he invested in like worse. He's the CEO <laughs> of a large corporation. He seems to get it all. Uh, swings it not terribly. Almost won his first PGA Tour event before he won his first collegiate tour event. I don't know if that's ever been done. Very few M's have ever done it, and I'm pretty sure Phil had knocked off a few collegiate titles before. Kids, 
the kid's moving. He's impressive. That just, I mean, just this flock of young kids. Like the, the fact that you can be a couple years into Stanford, damn near win the Travelers. You've already played a couple U.S. Opens. It's like they're they're ready. Yeah, you. <laughs> You win one of the biggest amateur events in the world, the Western Am, going to Lollapalooza. Love week. that, by the way. Like, so I'm not going to let this tournament get in the way of a good time. I respect that about the, about the young man. And we like some music. I love some music. You know what I like to listen to it on, Cole? I have a feeling I do. It's called Rock Form. It's called Rock Form, exactly. And it is the holiday season. What better way to take care of loved ones, friends, golfers, non-golfers, whatever. Rock Form, we talk about it all the time. It's the best speaker in golf. It's the best speaker, period. Things unbreakable. Waterproof, cocktail proof. You know, we've ran through the whole deal. I use mine literally every single time I step onto the golf course and off the golf course as well. And I am bad, as you know, about charging the thing or occasionally dropping it. You know how it goes. Um, still ticking after all these years. Love the thing. And you can love it too. All you got to do is go to rockform.com. Use code SUBROCK, S-U-B-R-O-K-2-5. That, that's for 25% off your entire order. Get one for you. Get one for your friends. Like I said, holiday season. Golfers got everything they can want. Get them one of these. This is one of those can't miss can't miss gifts for a golfer. The amount of people that come up to me and tell me how much they love rock form, it is unbelievable. So make sure you go get yours now. It's R O K F O R M dot com. Rockform.com code subrock twenty five. That's it. That's it. Be the you'll be the favorite auntie, favorite uncle, favorite everything. All right. Well, let's get to some picks. And let's do. once again, your football heater continues. Oh my God. You had the under in the Tennessee Georgia game, which hit Layupville, by the way, on that one. I Layupville. Took, I took Texas Tech out of spite. I was feeling very good through three quarters. I was getting points and they were winning the game. I was like, all right, we're going to be good. You got to buy out if you bet against TCU before at halftime. It always looks good at halftime. And then we show up in a big way. OK, well, that's good advice mm -hmm. for maybe leading into always this week against out. Texas. Uh, I'm going to start off with a team coming off a massive win. And I think they're really starting to play some nice football. Obviously, they beat Alabama, but they're heading into Arkansas. They're only three point favorites. I think Arkansas just got clipped by Liberty. Yeah, so I don't, I don't understand why that line's so long. So I'm going all in on the Tigers. It gives me a little like when I saw that line. That was my first one. I was like, circle, hundred percent smash. Gives me a little like, what's going on? What do I not know about that they know about? Typically, Vegas doesn't mess up, but that seems like that's it. Mm -hmm. LSU making a charge right now. They, I mean, they got a couple losses, but they 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 got a lot ahead of them still. And Arkansas going the opposite way. Right now, I love that, but I'm going to smash that, too, unless I hear some weird news I mean, coming out. LSU controls their own destiny in the West. I yeah, they can the still SEC, win the SEC, so, yeah. and then, I mean, what are they going to yeah. do, leave the SEC champ out? No, probably not. They could get in there with two L's, which I think they're the only team ever to make college football playoffs with two L's right now. That one jumped off the page at me, so. So Arkansas will probably win Stay tight, yeah, they probably, <laughs> most likely. I'm going with the team coming off a bad L, and they typically respond after bad L's. I That was the one that I loved the most. I was kind of searching the, the slate for another one. Bama's given 11 and a half to Ole Miss. I'm not positive on Ole Miss right now. They, they look good at times. They've looked not great at times. I just, Saban, after a loss and all the rat poison and all that stuff, they either completely lay down and die because, like, we can't win a natty anymore. Like, what's the point of being at Bama if that's off the table? Or they come back and they're like, we've lost twice. We damn sure ain't losing again. And it's a week after. I got to feel, I feel like Saban is going to be all up in that ass this week in practice and 11 and a hook. I just take them. And Ole Miss. No offense to our wonderful CBS producer, Seller Shy, whose son plays for Ole Miss, but there's a lot of talk. Auburn going hard after Lane Kiffin, so there's going to be a lot of outside noise there heading into a really big game. Auburn making a lot of noise right now. Uh, Deion Sanders uh, potentially rumored for that gig as well. But, I mean, I just watched, I watched the entire Ole Miss game. I had them against uh, A&M. I was like, when are you going to start doing what you do, which is score all the time? Didn't happen. I just That's less about Ole Miss and more just pissed off Bama. Hopefully that's what you get. On right. 11 and a hook. Well, the PGA Tour is heading into H-Town, Houston, Texas. Pretty good field. Scotty Scheffler, Sam Burns, Hideki Matsuyama teeing it up this week. Scotty Scheffler, a huge favorite, like five and a half to five one. Five and a half to one here. Switch back to Come, the old putter, by the way. Coming off of 62. Yeah, put, put her on the bench for a few days. Brought her back. She mm -hmm. responded Sometimes with 62. Sometimes you got to do that. All right, well, he's a huge favorite. I don't Obviously, I don't like that number, gambling-wise, five and a half to one. I'm going with a guy a little farther down the board. Ball striking machine, which... That's what's required around Memorial Park, in my opinion. And this guy can absolutely hit it. Aaron Wise going off at 18-1. to 1. Love that. Hits it good. Gets that little flat stick going. Like, he does more often. Like, it's coming around more often than it isn't right now with that little broomstick in there. I'm going to go with another guy. Like like you said, it's Tita Green golf course. Tough golf course. Longer. Greens are tiny. Kind of old school. Got a guy that hits it pretty good. Hideki going off at 19-1. to 1. I feel like that's pretty long. Like, Scotty at 5, mm -hmm. five and a half to 1. It's like, I mean, I'm... I'm I might think he's going to win, but I ain't betting at five and a half to one. 19 and one. I uh, like that a little bit more, especially from a major champ. All right. For my long shot, I'm going with your guy, 
See if he can get done, get it done without you. He's going off at 50 oh. to 1. He drives the shit out of it. Mm. He puts it really nice. I, I think it's about time for him to contend. Wyndham Clark's 50 to 1. I don't know if he can get it done without me, if I'm being <laughs> honest. You know? Well, if Very he does, it just proves you mean nothing. When I can't, if I'm not there to hold his hand to do literally everything, he's got a little bit of stress. But truth be told, it is time for him to start contending, winning some golf tournaments because physically, talent wise, you've seen it. I've seen it. It's. It's crazy the way that ball comes off the club face. And he does the other things good, too. It's just like these little mental things that go on with him that prevent him from, from winning. But talent-wise, he's got it all. He needs that big brain of yours. He needs that massive noggin of mine to get him around the place. I'm going to go with another guy. Same type of deal as Hideki. I'm just going ball strikers. Don't love his putting all that much, but he hits it straight and he hits it flush. Emiliano Grillo, 42 to 1. Same kind of deal. The angry Argentine. He can get going. He can Love get him. going. Just putt it, or excuse me, just hit it around that place like you do with that little baby fade. It's just over and over. And just be decent with the putter because he hits it great. So I'll go Emiliano at uh, 42 to 1. All get right. paid. I love it. Yeah, very nice Might payoffs. as well. And ride that football train you oh got going right God. now. I think that's 9 and 1. Wow. I was going back. 9 and 1. The only team that screws me was Baylor against West Virginia. Mm. We'll yeah. let it happen. I can live with it. And okay. TCU's got them in a couple weeks. Oh, we do. We go Texas, Baylor. I don't know what's going to happen. We've got Iowa State. It's already all gravy at this point. It's a better season than we thought. But just to be in the discussion, I would have never. I mean, it's already surpassed everything. But come on, Froggies. Just go get them horns. All There'll right. be a lot of text going out if they get that game. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on next week's Golf Subpar.